DeSoto and the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers, Coast to Coast, present Groucho Marx. And you bet your life. Groucho sent me to see the new DeSoto. Groucho sent me and I love to drive this car. It's long and low and roomier, so handsome you can see. It's powerful and I'm so glad that Groucho sent me. Listen to him when you hear Groucho say. Go drive the new DeSoto at DeSoto Plymouth Dealers today. Here I am tonight with $1,500 for one of our couples. And if any of them say the secret word, the duck will fly down and pay him $101. That's true. We, we've made a, we've been obliged to make a substantial increase in the amount of the secret word. We have to recognize that there are other shows in television now that are giving away much more substantial sums. And we decided that the only way we could fight fire was with fire. So we've raised the secret word from the customary $100 to $101. Okay, now. <laughs> All right. On your way, Peter. Well, Groucho, uh, just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Mr. William Weber to be on the show. Mm -hmm. And his partner is a special guest... Mrs. Heilbroner? Hmm? Mrs. Heilbroner of Weber and Heilbroner, is this? I have no idea. Uh, you rarely do, George. <laughs> uh, I wanted to tell you about this young lady that I invited to the show merely because she happens to be a friend of mine. You have a friend? Yes, uh, her name is uh, Miss Claudia Morimoto. Oh, is And I'd so? like Mr. Weber and Miss Morimoto to come in right now, please. Uh, right now. <laughs> well, welcome, welcome to You Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and you'll divide $101. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Claudia Morimoto, eh? And you're a friend of Fenneman's? How old are you, Claudia? Seven. Seven, huh? Eh? Well, you're a right cute-looking girl, huh? You seem like such a bright little girl, Claudia. How is it you're a friend of Fenneman's? Huh? Well, Where I did you know George? I, are you in the same grade at school? No, I met him on the airplane, and... Were you the hostess? No. I saw him, and then, uh, I didn't know if it was really him, and it was him. And so I was talking to him, and then... And then my daddy came, so I had to go to the back for refreshments, and then... You had to go back to, uh, for refreshments? Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> and then I, uh... Well, uh, how did you meet Mr. Fenneman? Well, I was talking to him. Did you pull to his coat him. when he went past or something? No. No, I just walked by, and then I saw him. Oh. Well, what do you think of him, Mr. Fenneman? Is he pretty funny? Yes, I think he's funny. Hmm. Would you say he's funnier than I am? <laughs> no, I think you're funnier than all. <laughs> I'm glad you said that, Claudia. Mr. Fenneman is glad you said that, too. You know, it, it isn't easy to find work in the middle of the season. <laughs> These jobs don't grow on trees, you know, unless you're a gorilla. You know? Do you think Mr. Fenneman is handsome? Yes, I think he's handsome. You do, huh? You think he's uh, handsomer than I am? Yes. <laughs> well, uh, you can't have everything, I guess. <laughs> Beauty and talent, I guess. It's just too much to ask. Huh? You know, I have a little girl about your age, Melinda. She's nine. And I know how she spends her day. Now, now tell me, how do you spend your day? What do you like to do best of all? Well, I read some books and... Uh, <laughs> You said the sacred word, so you, you and your friend here, each get, uh, it's $50.50 and 50 cents for you, and, uh, and his, uh, $50.50 for you. Thank you. Now, Arabidachi. <laughs> and you're, uh, Bill Weber? Yes, sir. How, how did you get on the show? Who are you a friend of? Nobody. <laughs> oh, come now, you must have some friends. <laughs> What sort of uh, uh, work do you do? Well, I'm a buyer in the office of the purchasing agent of the city of Los Angeles. Well, that sounds like a pretty imposing job. Uh, just what do you purchase? Well, everything from soup to nuts. 
Well, you've been overbuying, I think. <laughs> There's one thing this town doesn't need is more nuts. <laughs> I think we have enough even for Nevada. <laughs> well, I presume you buy stationery for the city and mucilage and water coolers and things like that, but what are some of the unusual things you buy? Could you give us an example? Well, recently we bought an elephant and a, uh, some ladybugs for the park department. Ladybugs and an elephant? Didn't you buy any uh, gentleman bugs for the ladybugs? Well, actually... It seems uh, like a pretty cruel thing to do, doesn't it? All ladybugs aren't ladies. Some of them are men bugs, too. <laughs> How much did you pay for the ladybugs? Oh, they're about ten for a penny. Well, that's cheap enough for ladybugs, isn't it? <laughs> Makes an ideal gift for the man who has everything. <laughs> well, I'd like to go on talking to you two, but it's time to play You Bet Your Life. You don't want to sing us a little Japanese song before we go into the game, huh? No? Okay. Well, then we play... Uh... Play the game. Claudia, you're pretty young to take part in our quiz. Is your mother in the audience? Yes, she's right over there. Where is she? Over there. Mrs. Uh, Morimoto, would you come up here, please? Mrs. Morimoto, would you mind standing in for Claudia in our quiz? I'd be glad to. All right. Well, Claudia and Mr. Weber, you selected small towns and cities of the U.S. Uh, a. I'm going to list six cities and towns all in the same state, and you tell me in what state they're located. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Now, you can start with 10, 20, 50, 80, 100. What do you want to start with? We'll go for 100. Now. 100. Here are the towns and cities. Elk Point, Lake Andes, Deadwood, Mound City, and Aberdeen. What state are they in? South Dakota. That's right. South Dakota is right. <laughs> On, a, on your way, you have $200. That's a pretty tough question. Oh. Now what are you going to go for? 90 $90. $90? All right. Double Springs, Phoenix City, Wetumpka, Muscle Shoals, and Grove Hill. Double Springs, Phoenix City, Wetumpka, Muscle Shoals, and Grove Hill. Tennessee? No, you were close. It's Alabama. You uh, lost half your 200. You still have $100. All right. Now, what are you going to try? 80. 80? 80. Here are the towns and cities. Skowhegan, Wiscasset, South Paris, Banga, and Millinocket. What is the what state? What's the next to last one? Banga. B-A-N-G-O-R. That'd be Maine. Maine. That's right. That's Maine is right. We now have $180. You're going to go for 70? You've got a pretty sharp partner there. Here are the towns and cities. Lady Smith, Green Bay, Baraboo, Rhinelander, Friendship, and Washburn. Wisconsin. Wisconsin. On Wisconsin is right. And you wind up with $250. Claudia, don't I get a kiss? Okay. Right here, huh? Attaboy. I'll get you later, Mrs. Morimoto. <laughs> well, thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. It's very clear The car you've wanted is really here It's delightful, it's delovely It's DeSoto You'll understand the reasons why For once you drive it, you want to buy It's delightful, it's delovely It's DeSoto You can tell at a glance That this red car is far in advance You can hear that great big engine murmuring low so make sure you see and drive the new DeSoto I man alive. It's delightful, it's the lovely, it's delirious, it's the living, and it's the latest, it's the limit, it's the luck, it's DeSoto. Tomorrow at your DeSoto dealers, see and drive the delightful, the lovely DeSoto for 1956. <laughs> Uh, Groucho, Miss uh, Roberta Carroll and Mr. Rafael Brandes are waiting to talk to you, so folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Say the secret word and divide $101. <laughs> 
It's a common word. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Roberta Carroll and Raphael Brandes. Roberta, are you married? No, I'm not. Now you're talking. <laughs> In that case, let's find out all we can about you. Are you engaged? No. Age? 21. Height? 5'8". Eyes? Green. Hair? Brown. Health? Very good. Legs? Two. <laughs> right, too. Where are you from, Roberta? Well, I was born in Long Beach and then moved to West Hollywood, and I live in North Hollywood now. Mm -hmm. You're Ralph uh, Brandes? Raphael. Oh, Raphael, yeah. Are you any relation of the former Supreme Court Justice? No, I wish I were. He's puzzling B-R-A-N-D-E-I-S, and there's no I in mine. Oh. Well, you see, you jumped at conclusions. I wasn't referring to him. Are you any relation to that other Supreme Court Justice, uh, William Howard Taft? <laughs> there again, I'm missing. Oh. Uh, where are you from, Raphael? Originally in New York City, where I got my education, a little war stint, Columbia University and NYU, where I... Oh. You my... must have been there around the time of uh, Rogers and Hart and Oscar Hammerstein and... Uh... Same time. What did you uh, study there? What did you... Anything in particular, or you just... <clears throat> No, I became a lawyer and practiced oh. for 16 years in New York. Well, uh, are you married, Raphael? Yes, 31 and a half years. 31 years of marriage. And you can't be much of a lawyer then, huh? <laughs> Seems to me in 31 years you could have found some kind of a loophole. <laughs> Roberta, that's uh, pretty formal. Uh, what do your friends call you? Robbie. Robbie? Do you have a job, Robbie? No, I'm a student at USC. Oh, you're still going to school, huh? Yes. Senior. Yeah, well, I, was, I was cum laude there, you know. Huh? In yeah, fact, I, I was know. so laude, they asked me not to cum back. <laughs> <laughs> do you live on the campus or do you live at home? I live on the, on the campus in a sorority house. Oh. Do you like living in a sorority house? Very much. It's a wonderful place to live. I'd like to try it sometime. <laughs> What are some of the important rules that you girls break around your house? Well, the university has set up a curfew, of course. <coughs> and uh, this means that the girls have to be in at 10.15, Monday through Thursday, Friday night and Saturday night at 2, and Sunday night at 12. 2 in the morning? 2 in the morning. You allow us to stay up until 2 in the yes, morning? Yes, those are date nights, you see. Parties mm. and oh. that sort of thing. And um, Panhellenic has set up a ruling that uh, alters this plan if the girl has a scholarship rating over a B average or an 85, which is about the same thing. Some of the girls are 85, you say? <laughs> <laughs> now, if they have an average of over 85 oh. or a B average, then they can stay up. So the average girl I go out with is about 85. <laughs> <laughs> if they have an average of 85, they start at midnight? They can stay out until midnight, they Monday can stay through out Friday. Until Tuesday, until two o'clock in the morning. This is Monday through Thursday. They oh. can stay out until twelve if they have over a B average. Well, if anybody's going to keep it till midnight, she also needs a perfect thirty-six, twenty-four, thirty-six average, doesn't she? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a nice couple, and you have a lot in common. And my advice is get married right away. <laughs> now let's play your bet you like. Remember, to start you off with a hundred dollars. Miss a question, and you lose half your bankroll. Is that clear? In the race for the $1,500, the first couple won $250, and the secret word is book. Now, you selected the musical category. These are all top tunes of the last 20 years. Remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Now, what do you want to start with? 10 50 up to 100 90 $90. All right. Jerome Kind, Dorothy Fields, and Jimmy McHugh collaborated on this song that was featured in the show Roberta. You tell me the title of it. Okay, Jack. <laughs> What's the name of it? I don't know. It's from Roberta. What is, is the Roberta? title? Uh, you should Roberta. have known. Looking at her, you should have known the title. It's Roberta. lovely to look at. Lovely, lovely to look, look at. Oh. <laughs> well, you still have $50. All right. Now, you've still got a long ways to go. What are you going to try this time? 80, 70, 60, 10? 80. Be fine. All right, $80. 80. This song is from a big Broadway musical. Let's see if you can identify it. Play, Jack. Oh. 
What is it? Whatever Lola wants. That's right. Whatever Lola wants, uh, I don't get. You now have $130. Now, what are you going to try for? Things are picking up. You can have a hundred if you like. A hundred? hundred? All right, we'll try it. This song was written by Rogers and Hammerstein, and it's from the picture, picture State Fair. What is the name of it? Okay, Jack. What is it? A grand night for seven. That's right. I just wanted to see if they could play it. That's <laughs> all. And you now have two hundred and thirty dollars. You're climbing, and it's your last chance to beat the other couples. Now, do you want to go to another plateau? <laughs> well, then, would it be a pleasure? Next week. <laughs> okay. Well, Robbie, it'd be a pleasure. What are you going to go for? Seventy. You haven't had sixty. Fifteen. Seventy. All right, Roberta. Seventy. Mac Gordon and Harry Warren wrote this song for the picture "Hello Frisco, Hello." Give me the title of it. <laughs> What is the answer? I think I never knew. Da 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 di da da di. I never knew that. Right. Well, you're awfully close, but they won't give it to you. It's you'll never know. Oh. You were flirting with it. <laughs> well, you wound up with half the two thirty. You wind up with one hundred fifteen dollars. Well, thanks and good luck to the Soda Plymouth dealer. Thank Sorry you didn't win too. more. Huh? Well, Roger, uh, we have a couple of men waiting to talk to you now. Oh, how dull. <laughs> They're Mr. Percy Meek and Mr. Emmert Ashford. What so, a bore. Gentlemen, when you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. I'm sure you'll get along. Welcome, welcome to the Soda Plymouth dealer. Say the secret <laughs> word and divide $100, $101. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Emmett Ashford, eh? Well, glad to see you, Emmett. How do you do, Groucho? How do you do? For the benefit of the people who don't know, Emmett's one of the most respected and capable umpires in the Pacific Coast League. <laughs> Emmett, I understand you may go up to the majors next year. Is there any truth to this uh, rumor? Well, gosh, Garcia, there have been rumors, but uh, and quite a lot of smoke, but I haven't heard anything definite, and uh, of course it's my ambition like everybody else. Oh, I've seen know. you umpiring a lot of games this year, Emmett. Are you aware of that? Yes, and I've seen you, too. Now, that's ridiculous. How could you possibly see me clear up in the grandstand when you can't even see a strike six inches from your nose? Well, my job, I heard you on several occasions. <laughs> I'm only kidding, Emmett. You're one of the best umpires in baseball. I'd say you don't miss more than five out of six. <laughs> How old are you, Em? Mm, Thirty-nine. Thirty-nine, huh? Are you married? No, I'm a bachelor. Oh. Well, don't be too smug now, Emmett. Even an umpire can strike out on some fast curves. No. <laughs> Emmett, you just dust off your plate for a minute. I want to talk to your partner over here. By the way, why do you always turn your back towards the outfield when you're dusting off the plate? Is that for reasons of safety? <laughs> it can be dangerous, I uh, have found out, though. As, uh, someone uh, should inadvertently advise the pitcher to pitch to now. <laughs> Has it ever happened to you? Huh? No, thank you. Oh. And uh, your name is Percy Meek? That's right. I've heard a lot about you, Mr. Meek. Aren't you going to come into a lot of real estate one of these days? Not that I know of. Well, that's strange. I've always heard that the Meek shall inherit the age. <laughs> I think that's a misquotation. Well, Percy, judging from that cowboy outfit you're wearing, I'd say you were an insurance salesman. Am I correct? No, sir. Well, uh, no. are you a cowboy? Yes, sir. Well, which kind? Drugstore, television, or real? Oh, I guess you'd call me a real cowboy. A real cowboy? You mean you've actually seen a cow? Yes. Well, Where are you from, first? Paramount or Republic Studios? Oklahoma. Oklahoma Studios? Is that in town here? Yeah? Well, I didn't see any studios there. Uh, have you ever been on a horse? Oh, a few times. Well, what are you doing here? Shouldn't you be heading him off at the pass? Well, hardly. Huh? What kind of work do you do, Pace? Are you still punching cows? Sometimes. Now, why do you punch the cows? Do they ever punch back? Huh? Well, not so far they haven't. Huh? Not so far. Why do they call it punching cows, do you know? 
No. No. You're really a bag of information. Huh? <laughs> well, tell me, Pacey, as a real blown-in-the-bottle cowboy, what do you think of the cowboy movies on television? You know, like Hoot Gibson and uh, Tom Mix and, uh, and Bill Hart and uh, <laughs> cowboy Bronco Billy Anderson. Uh, <laughs> Oh, I guess they're all right, but I never can understand why they don't run out of ammunition. They can shoot 15 or 20 times without reloading. <laughs> then when they get well, they all They get through, reloaded, but this is after the picture is over. <laughs> could be. Yeah. And I never can understand why they ride away and leave the girl. They never did that way when I was a boy. <laughs> well, they, uh, some of them are married, you know. Huh? Well, that could be. Emmett, one of the reasons the crowd always <coughs> likes to watch you working a game is because in addition to being a good umpire, you put on quite a show. Now, why are you so dramatic? I saw you down in Phoenix, you know, when DeRocha was down there with the Giants against Cleveland last year. Well, um... You were pretty fancy it? down there. You were doing some pretty fancy sweeps there. <clears throat> well, uh, I've asked that question quite a lot of times, Groucho, but all I can answer is that it's just the way I feel within myself. A man is either out of safe... And there's no in-between. And the more emphatic you make it, the better off it is for everyone concerned. There's never any doubt in your mind about a decision, huh? Not in mine. No. Oh. <laughs> <clears throat> well, uh, let's say you're in action. Let's say you're behind the plate and I'm the manager of the home team. Now, Pisces, you go sit in the bleachers, huh? Now, Emmett, pretend it's the last of the ninth inning. Score is tied and a runner tries for home. Okay, here comes the throw. He's sliding. Now, what is it, Emmett? Hello! <laughs> Out, you robber! I begin with the catch and drop the ball. <laughs> Emmett, that was as miserable a decision as I've ever seen. Now, if you want to win some money in the quiz, you better take another look. Okay, here comes the runner. Now, there's the throw. What is it, Emmett? Hey! <laughs> See, you have to know how to handle an umpire. You have to be just as crooked as they are. <laughs> Emma, put it there. If the majors don't grab you next season, the police will. <laughs> I predict you're going to be in the big leagues inside of another year. You'll be a sensation up there, too. Thank you, Gotcha. Enough about baseball and cowboys. Let's get on to some serious business and play your bet your life. In the race for the $1,500... The first couple still leads with $250. Now, one answer between you on everything. You selected sports. Why, Emmett, you dirty crook. <laughs> I thought you were going to take something like fan dancing. As it's <laughs> Remember, the more the question's worth, the harder it is. Now, uh, what do you want to start with? 10, 20, 50, or 100? Uh, 100. 100. What do you call the system of betting where all bets are recorded and the odds are determined by the amount wagered by the bettors? Uh, Parimutuel. Parimutuel is right. You now have $200. Parimutuel. Used to be Paricomo. Now what are you going to go for now? Well, you might as well go. 90? 90? 90 dollars. Now, Bob Richards was the 1952 Olympic champion in what track event? Pole You don't care anything about him. Pole vaulting is right, huh? You now have $290. Why don't you stick your horn in there, cowboy? Okay. All right, what are you going to go for, 80? 80. 80. In golf, what do you call the score for a hole played in two under par? Two under par, huh? Yeah. No, it's an eagle. I, just, I was going to say birdie, but I knew it wasn't a birdie. So you now have $145. All right, now don't get discouraged. you still got a way to go. You want to go for 70 Right. All right, floaters, sinkers, and knucklers are terms in what sport? Baseball. <laughs> Baseball pitches is absolutely right. And you wind up with $215. That means that Claudia Morimoto and Mr. Weber, with $250 in just one minute, get the chance at the $1,500 question. And now, Groucho, our next guest is a powerful one. The new 1956 DeSoto. And when I say powerful, 
I mean powerful. The tremendous new DeSoto Fireflight engine has 255 horsepower. That's right, 255 horsepower. Under this beautiful hood is a tremendous new V8 engine. It's bigger, and it's a new high compression engine. It also has a new and far superior 12-volt electrical system for higher ignition and much greater performance. Well, what do all these technical details mean to you? Well, they mean that your beautiful new DeSoto will breeze over the steepest hills. Start off like a champion sprinter. And give you terrific new acceleration in every driving range, particularly in the passing range so vitally important for safe driving in modern traffic. In addition, the new DeSoto also has brand new braking power, an entirely new kind of brake that works far better. A bigger brake with more reserve power and longer wear. That means safer driving for you. Tomorrow, see and drive the car that brings new power, new performance, new safety, and new beauty to the medium price field. The car that's delightful to drive, delovely to see, the delightful, delovely DeSoto for 1956. And here are uh, Claudia Morimoto and Mr. Weber and uh, Claudia's mother, the winning trio, uh, all set for the $1,500 question. Oh, buck up, buck up, buck up. Get right in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, here we go for $1,500. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you think happy and please no help in the audience. A song by John Howard Payne featured in the opera, Clary, the Maid of Milan, is known the world over. For $1,500, what is the name of this well-known song? One of the most famous songs in the whole world. The name of the composer is John Howard Payne. P-A-Y-N-E. <laughs> What is the answer you two decided upon? If you don't know, guess. Take a guess. You should know it. You should know it. It's home sweet home. Well, I'm sorry. So that means the big question next week will be worth $2,000. Well, they lost the big money. How much did they win the quiz, George? They won $250 in the quiz. Well, congratulations and thanks to all of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Go in and see you to sow the Plymouth dealer tomorrow. And when you do, tell them Groucho sent you. Be sure to tune in again next week, same time, same station, for Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life. Don't miss Chrysler Corporation's big television show on another network. And don't forget to listen to Groucho on radio every Wednesday. Brought to you by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. This is George Fenneman signing off with a reminder from the National Safety Council. Do not go around a bus or streetcar, front or rear, after alighting from it. Wait until it leaves before crossing the street. NBC Television.